Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, I thank all the organizers for the invitation to talk here. This is the first time for me here in ICTS. It feels wonderful to be here. Thank you. OK, so I'll be talking about genus of division algebras over discrete value fields. So uh, we saw this notion of genus uh, in um, Igor Rapanchuk's talk day before yesterday. So I'll be elaborating a little bit more um, on the notion of genus and some tools to compute the genus of division algebras. So let's start with the definitions. Uh, throughout the talk, D will denote a division algebra or a field K. And we may ask how much of information about the division algebra is uh, carried by the subfields that D contains. Or uh, in other words, you can ask how to distinguish if we can distinguish division algebras by the collection of uh, maximal subfields. So here, uh, note that I use uh, the separable maximal subfields because as we saw before, uh, separable maximal subfields correspond to uh, maximal tori in the corresponding algebraic group. So uh, the information about uh, the division algebra that is carried by the maximal separable, separable maximal subfields correspond to the information that maximal tori in the corresponding algebraic group. OK, so this notion of genus was defined by um, Chernas of Rappenchuk and Rappenchuk. Um, so if D is a division algebra, then the genus of this class is just all the classes in the Brouwer group, such that all the classes D prime, such that D and D prime have the same separable maximal subfields. And there is also other notions, the notion of splitting genus considered by Krashen and McKinney where they consider um, uh, the division algebras to have same separable finite dimensional splitting. Okay, so that is called splitting genus. Um, sorry? Sorry? It's K. K, division algebra over K means the center is K. Okay, so we may ask this question, what is the size of genus of a division algebra? Is it finite? And first note that the opposite algebra also has the uh, same collection of subfields as D. So therefore, the genus is going to be bigger than the size of the genus. I'm sorry, this is supposed to be the size of genus is bigger than 1 if the exponent is bigger than or equal to 3. So in particular case of uh, exponent 2, in the two torsion of the Brouwer group, we may ask if the genus is trivial. More particularly, we can ask if Q is a quaternion, uh, is the genus trivial? Is it, it is just, is, uh, in other words, you're asking whether um, quaternions can be distinguished just by the maximal subfields that it contains. This was originally posed by, the question was posed by Prasad and Rappenshuk in um, 2009. Okay, so here are some results that are known uh, so far. So D is a division algebra over K. We assume that the characteristic uh, is co-prime to the degree. That is, we are in good characteristic. Then, um, Chernosu, Rappenchuk, and Rappenchuk proved that if K is finitely generated, then the genus is finite. Okay, so uh, we may ask if the genus is finite if K is not finitely generated, but still nice. So for example, you have fields like these, um, the Laurent series over Q and over QP, and you have iterated Laurent series over K, where K is actually nice, in, you know, whatever that means. Yeah, it comes. Uh, these fields are not finitely generated, but come naturally in um, arithmetic geometry. Okay, so what happens in the special case of quaternion? It is known that the genus is trivial uh, for global fields and more generally for what are known as transparent fields. This is due to Garibaldi and Saltman. Uh, and also the function field of Severi Brower varieties of odd degree. This is a very recent result by um, Rashen, um, Matri. Uh, Rowan, Rappenchuk, and Saltman. Okay. Um, what else do we know? We know uh, what is known as the stability theorem, that if the genus is known to be, genus of a quaternion is known to be trivial for K, then the same is also true for purely transcendent list. Okay, so this is called a stability theorem, this is known. And we may ask if this genus of quaternion is always trivial for nice K, uh, it is not finitely generated if it's not in, if it doesn't fall under any of these categories. For example, higher local fields, and uh, you know, Laurent series over some nice fields, or function fields of curves over these fields, which are uh, semi-global fields that we just saw in uh, Parimala's talk. So these are the questions that we have, and um, 
I want to mention that so far in the literature, uh, the, uh, showing the finiteness of genus or computations on genus relied on um, the size of the unramified Brava group, which I will briefly mention. So uh, let K be a, a field with a set of discrete valuations V. Let K B denote the completion and uh, the residue is denoted by K B bar. And we assume that the characteristic of the residue is co-prime to the degree. Then uh, we have this residue map from the Brouwer group to H1 of the residue field uh, over all the valuations V. The kernel of this residue map is the unramified Brouwer group. And why is this important is that uh, the, the upper bound of the genus is controlled by the unramified Brouwer group. Uh, this, was, uh, this is due to, again, um, Chernasur, Rapanchuk, and Rapanchuk. I forgot to mention the names here, but uh, this is due to their results. Uh, that this is uh, bounded by the size of unramified Brouwer group. So this is phi is the Euler torsion function, and R is the number of ramification places of D. So this is anyway finite. So showing finiteness of uh, the genus reduces to showing the finiteness of this uh, size of this unramified Brouwer group. Okay, so uh, so the finiteness would imply finiteness of the division algebra, the genus of the division algebra. There are a few drawbacks with this method. The, the, the point is that sometimes the unramified Brouwer group, the size uh, can be very large and the bound that is given uh, that I show in the previous slide can be pretty loose. And sometimes it is not even finite for some nice fields. Okay, for example, these kinds of fields is not finite. And secondly, um, this does not, uh, the method that we saw before does not give explicit description of the elements in the genus. So we show the finiteness of genus using the unramified Brouwer group, but to tell explicitly what are the kind of elements in the genus, uh, we need some different tools. So uh, I'll first note that in this case, the example that I gave, it is just the Lorentz series over Q. So we don't know what happens over the field, but then we know over global fields that the genus is bounded, it's finite. Similarly over here, so we know over base field, we have some idea about genus over the base field, we're asking what happens if you take, uh, you know, uh, complete discrete value fields over that. Okay, so the setup is this, uh, let K be a complete discrete valued field with residue K bar, and D is a division algebra over K with uh, residue, there's this notion of residue of division algebra, this is over K bar. Then we may ask how is the genus of D related to the genus of its residue? Um, and uh, we can also ask, suppose if this genus is finite for every division algebra over the residue, is the same thing true over K. Okay, and more specifically for the two torsion uh, part of the Brouwer group, we may ask, suppose if the genus of any uh, element of the two torsion group is trivial, is it same true for, is the same true for any class over the uh, original field? Okay, so the, how, do we, how do we get information about the genus over the uh, complete discrete valued field if you know something about the genus over residue field? Okay, so some more general questions that we can ask is suppose if K is a field with a set of discrete valuations, let KB denote the completion. So you may take uh, these examples in mind. You can take function fields of curves over Q or function fields of C, uh, function fields of curves over complete discrete valued fields. These are semi-global fields, we just saw that. Uh, and we can think of it to be the geometric valuations or valuations coming from um, some proper model. And let D be a division algebra over K. And we denote by D sub V the completion, uh, P tensor KV. And uh, so this may not be actually division algebra. This may, uh, this may be matrix over division algebra. So we take DV bar to be the residue of the underlying division algebra of this. Now we may ask how is the genus of D related to the genus of the residue at every valuation? So we have a bunch of valuations here. It's so okay, it's no longer complete. So we suppose if we have idea about the genus at every um, residue, uh, residue field at every valuation, how is it related to the original genus? And suppose if we understand genus um, in general of all the algebras uh, of, of every residue field, what can we say about the genus over K? Okay, so I want to talk about some uh, new methods that we could possibly use to compute genus. Um, so the setup is as, as before, K is a field with set of discrete valuations. D is a division algebra, and we assume that this is the DV is tame. That means inertially split. 
uh, for wild algebras, this method doesn't seem to apply, and it's a, it's a little more a subtle matter to uh, deal with wild algebras. So the rough idea is to show the following. Um, the questions that, that I posed before can be, could be answered using the following steps. So the first thing is you just classify dv. Suppose if it is ramified or unramified. Suppose if dv is unramified, then the genus of the, um, uh, the division algebra dv or the underlying division algebra of dv is directly related to the genus of the residual algebra. And if dv is semi-ramified, in the sense that it contains a totally ramified maximal subfield, then genus of uh, at every valuation of uh, uh, D consists of some powers of DV. Okay, uh, we can show this. And suppose uh, in cases where DV can be decomposed in terms of ramified and, ram and ramified components, it can be decomposed into one of these two, instead of these two, then we can show that the splitting genus also um, decomposes. I, uh, and finally, once we have some idea about genus locally at every valuation V using the above three steps, you can use some kind of uh, local to global tools to get information about the global genus. Okay, so this is roughly the idea to um, compute the genus for um, uh, division algebras over fields uh, with a set of discrete valuations. <coughs> okay, <coughs> so I'm going to talk about each of these steps in a little more detail. So the first thing is, suppose uh, if you have an unramified division algebra, okay, so uh, let uh, I be an unramified division algebra over uh, field K. So K is complete again um, with the uh, residue I bar. Then we have this map sending a division algebra to its residue. This induces an injective map of sets on the genus. If uh, K bar is perfect, then the above map is actually bijective. Um, in more, uh, uh, to be more specific, any element in here is actually the inertial lift of some element in the residual algebra. So there is this notion of inertial lift, just like in the case of fields, we have an inertial lift uh, of any separable extension. You can lift it um, over the uh, over the complete discrete value of field. If you have a separable extension of residue, you can lift it over field K. So a similar way, we also have the notion of inertial lift. And this is also a unique inertial lift for every residue. And uh, everything in here is actually inertial lift of some element in here. So in particular, this shows that since this map is injective, the genus of I is bounded by the genus of the residue. Okay, so if you show the, if you show finiteness of um, genus over residue, then automatically the finiteness of genus over K follows. Okay. Now, if uh, for, for the case of ramified algebras, Suppose n is tame, and if it is ramified, uh, it is split by a totally ramified extension, then we can show that the genus is actually power of n. The genus of n is just some power of n, where uh, the degree of n is co-prime to this power. Okay, so this is actually, the size of this actually given by all a torsion function. Oh, sorry, this is not capital N. <laughs> this is uh, phi of degree of n. Sorry for the mistake here, phi of degree of n. So this is also bounded if it is split by totally ramified extension. Uh, so what happens over complete discrete valued fields if it is not of either of the cases above, then uh, we have this decomposition lemma by Jacobson and Wadsworth that any tame division algebra can be decomposed into inertial and semi-ramified. Okay. Um, then uh, can also decompose the splitting genus accordingly. So any uh, element in the splitting genus of this, uh, of I tensor N is given by tensor product of I prime and N prime, where I prime is in the genus of I and N prime is in the genus of I. Okay, so uh, this gives you a nice description of how um, elements in the splitting genus looks like. However, I don't know if this, if this, uh, this can be, if this genus, splitting genus can be replaced by uh, genus. Okay, so in particular, the size of splitting genus is uh, bounded by the size of this, um, size of uh, genus of I, which is again dependent on, say, genus of I bar by the previous theorem. And this is again the de determined by the Euler torsion function of the degree of. Okay, so we know the boundedness of genus uh, provided this is bounded over the residue. So somehow, if you know, uh, if you know results on uh, about genus over the residue algebras, we can tell something about the genus 
was the um, field that you started. OK, so I'm, I want to demonstrate some more about this decomposition. Uh, so it can be a number field. Then uh, let's say we want to compute the genus of this division algebra over um, k of x, purely transcendental. We have this Fedi's exact sequence, uh, which is actually split. So splitting from here to here. And this red one denotes the constant classes. The blue one denotes the, um, the ramified ones. The splitting coming from here will denote the ramified one. OK, so let D be in, in, in this class, and let E be in the genus. Then by this uh, exact sequence, we can write D as C tensor R1, R2, up to R, R, where C comes from the constant class. It's in red. The blue comes from the splitting here. Then uh, we can show that anything in the genus also splits uh, in the following way. So it is of this form, where C prime is in the genus of C, and this is in the genus. OK, so this works specifically for the case of number field over X. Uh, sorry, uh, purely transcendental function functions over number field. And uh, in particular, the genus is bounded by the genus of C, and you know each of them are ramified, so it is just phi of n. Uh, n is this Gaussian here, and R is a ramification. So when you take n equals 2 here, phi of 2 is 1, and uh, you get the genus of D is bounded by genus of C. But C is over number field, and we know that the genus of quaternion over number fields is trivial. So this gives you stability theorem of um, <clears throat> Chernow, Surap, and Chicken. Okay. Uh, so uh, in particular, let's see what happens when you have division algebras of prime degree. So when the division algebra is of a degree prime, then it is going to be either ramified or unram semi ramified, unramified or semi ramified. And uh, for each of these cases, we have already seen the size of genus. This is, uh, if it's unramified, it's determined by the residue. Otherwise, it is just phi of p, which is just p minus 1. And uh, so therefore, from here, we get that if k bar satisfies the property that the genus is trivial for any quaternion over k bar, then the genus over k is also trivial for any quaternion. So in particular, it tells you that over fields like these, the genus is trivial of any quaternion is trivial, provided the genus over k is trivial. In particular, if you take Q, k to be equal to q, we can show that for these fields, the genus of quaternion is trivial. Same thing also for higher local fields, characteristic nodding. OK, so what happens over function fields of curves? So let's say we have function field of curve um, uh, over a number field. And let's assume that uh, the curve has a rational point. And let me denote valuations from um, four dimension one points of a regular proper model. Uh, we have this Shaw uh, Brouwer group, which is the kernel of this uh, global to local map with respect to these valuations. Then we can show that this is actually equal to Shaw of the Jacobian, which is just the uh, kernel of this H1 of K with respect to all the valuations, uh, all the valuations coming from the number field. Okay, so we have this uh, isomorphism. Uh, then uh, let Q be a quaternion algebra over K. Now we want to compute the genus of uh, this quaternion algebra Q over this function field K. So how do we proceed? If, uh, we can show that if you, if you take the um, completion, if you base change to the completion, then anything in the genus also uh, is in the genus of Q sub V. So anything, if P is in the genus of Q, the completion is also in the genus of the corresponding completion. So this is due to wrap and check and wrap and check. Now, uh, you can note, you note that uh, the, the residue fields are all global fields. So uh, because it is the function field of curve over a number field, the residue field with respect to the valuations that I did just described, so they're all global fields. Either there's a global function field or, um, or extension of number field. So therefore, we know that by, uh, by the theorem that I stated before, the residue fields satisfy that uh, property that genus is trivial for quaternion. So therefore, the genus uh, is trivial for um, every valuation for every k sub v. Therefore, pv is um, isomorphic. So the class of pv is same as the class of qv. And therefore, the genus is contained in q plus the Shaw of Brouwer group. The Shaw of Brouwer group is bounded by the Shaw of Jacobian, which I just uh, mentioned before. So in particular, uh, when, uh, when C is an elliptic curve, we have that the genus is, size of genus is bounded by the size of the shape of the genus. 
so the tate uh, the, so 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 this this quantity here shaw brower group is uh, contained inside uh, the unramified brower group so in particular you get a better bound uh, than using unramified brower group so now once we have uh, this description we can look at the elements in this set and filter out the things that that are not actually in the genus by using some um, explicit properties of uh, explicit pro properties of arithmetic uh, explicit arithmetic properties of e to show uh, that a few elements in here does not actually belong to genus in certain cases so we get even better bounds by analyzing this using arithmetic properties of, of, of e okay so uh, uh, so using these methods we could show triviality of genus for many fields including fields like these the semi global semi global fields where k satisfies this property that genus of q is trivial then we know that this is the genus is trivial for any quaternion over these and also when k is a real closed field um, and if you take the function field of curve over real closed fields the genus is also trivial okay, so these are some of the techniques that could be used to compute the genus thank you for it.